So I started um, with the math of sewing because I have eighth graders and it, like tip, or any typical middle school student, you know, when do I need to use this? When will I ever use this again? So um, a lot of them, uh, some of my girls are interested in sewing and all that. So I thought, um, why not, you know, buy a sewing and embroidery machine to try to um, incorporate a math concept. So I started with linear equations and my students, um, some of the items that we purchased was the uh, a brother's sewing and embroidery machine, uh, different pieces of material with designs and colors, extra needles, sewing scissors, and extra thread. And um, I wanted to connect um, linear equations first because eighth grade math is nothing but like a lot of geometry and a lot of uh, linear equations and um, transformations and all that. So um, I started off telling them to get, a, to get a six inch by six inch square so they had to use the Pythagorean theorem as well to make sure that it's a perfect square and you know uh, incorporate those topics with them as well. So, um, well, after our pre-assessment, the students created a perfect square. Um, the students were constructed to create their design. And I told them the more lines you use, the more difficult it's going to be. So we had some crazy designs. And um, can you go back one more? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so once the students completed their design, they found the linear equation for their lines in slope-intercept form. They had to use their y-intercepts, x-intercepts, coordinates, and the slope formula. So they had to apply all of those different concepts. And then you can go. That's a picture of one of the um, designs. And so she had many lines. So I told her to just pick two or three of them. And um, so they had to write it on there. And that was their original, um, I guess, their blueprint. And so then... Um, so next students were able to choose two different pieces of material because if I didn't limit it, they would have picked many. So um, then the students had to measure their size pieces with rulers and cut their own pieces out. And uh, once they had their pieces ready, they personally sewed their quilt pieces. Um, starting out, once they started to measure and cut and all that, they were like, um, can I change my design? So they had to do some problem solving and go back and say, okay, that was a little too many lines. I don't know how I'm going to cut that piece out. So, um, and then starting out, the boys, of course, were like, so are we going to get an old woman to quilt this for me? I said, are you call me an old woman? And they're like, oh, you're going to do it? And I said, nope, you are. You know, so um, they ended up having to sew. Even the boys were sewing and cutting out, and they seemed to really enjoy it. Um, let's see. I can't remember. Okay, so they're, they're measuring their pieces, cutting out. Um, they even had to do some problem solving on how to save pieces of material. Um, there's one of my boys actually sewing. Thank goodness that there was a really, really slow mode on this sewing machine. So <laughs> it was easier for them to sew and um, not get their fingers caught. <laughs> but uh, go on. I don't know. Uh, so my post-assessment scores is increasing. It, they increased by 20%. Um, their MAP scores increased tremendously from the previous year. Um, last year they had zero distinguished scores and this year our last map test we had three distinguished scores so that was really exciting. Um, some changes to this project that I would do um, are, you'll see in a minute I have examples, um, our quilt pieces ended up being very very small after they um, did the six by six and so I would tell them to every measurement, every piece that they measure, add an inch to it so that we have some room to overlap the pieces. Um, allow more time. I didn't, I ran out of time um, having to work individually with each student to sew, especially for the complicated ones. <laughs> and um, have pins to pin pieces together because I kind of forgot to buy those. Um, a bigger squ uh, quilt square design. I might go bigger than a six by six inch. Um, some setbacks once students started to measure and cut their design some students realized they needed to revise their pieces um, needles continued to come unthreaded so that was kind of frustrating for some of them but they had to learn how to rethread it um, and all that um, one needle actually broke 
so that was interesting. There's a picture of it. The boy's like, oh, I messed it up. And I said, no, no, it's okay. So that was the first time for me even changing a needle. Um, it was a great experience. Students enjoyed the application of their knowledge. Um, it wasn't very difficult, and it will definitely be repeated. Um, actually, I teach 6, 7, and 8 math and science and um, so I have seventh grade students in with my eighth grade students and they're like oh we don't get to do that and I said next year so I'm trying to make it an eighth grade project each year um, like I said the students really enjoyed it the boys even ended up enjoying it um, they get to um, use their previous knowledge like I said it's also an embroidery machine that's something I have bought it and I started looking and there's a ton of pieces and it's going to be a learning experience trying to embroider but originally um, and hopefully in the next coming years um, I will uh, incorporate embroidery with transformations in reflections and um, translations and let the students apply that as well and I have I only have four or 13 eighth grade students so um, my quilt piece ended up being super small, but so instead of making one big quilt, I decided to, um, I think I'm going to wait and add years and then make one big quilt for them. And then like all middle schoolers, some of them lost their quilt pieces, so I only have eight of them. So like you can see, there's different designs. This boy tried to be an overachiever and make a star, and once he started sewing, he's like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And I was like, you already cut the pieces. You've already got started. Let's finish it. So um, each of them, you know, a lot of them like to uh, make their own designs and have pick materials that represented them. So I'm really excited. One thing I'm definitely going to add is I'm going to make sure that they initial their quilt piece for previous years. So maybe when I teach their children I can say your your dad made that one <laughs> you know so but that's it